Just like Core Data is Apple's built-in framework for manipulating data, Core Image is their framework for manipulating images. This isn't drawing, or at least for the most part it isn't drawing, but instead it's about changing existing images, applying sharpening, blurs, vignettes, pixelation and more. If you ever used all the various photo effects available in Apple's Photo Booth app, that will give you a good idea of what Core Image is good for. However, Core Image doesn't integrate into Swift UI very well. In fact, I wouldn't even say it integrates into UIKit very well. Apple did some work to provide helpers, but it still takes quite a bit of thinking. Stick with me though, the results are quite brilliant once you understand how it all works, and you'll find it opens up a whole range of functionality for your apps in the future. First, we're going to put in some code to give us a basic image. I'm going to structure this in a slightly odd way, but it'll make sense once we mix in core image. We're going to create the image view as an optional at state property, force it to be the same width as the screen, then add an on appear modifier to actually load the image. Add an example image to your asset catalog, then modify your content view struct to this. At state, private var, image, optional image. VStack, image question mark, dot resizable, dot scale to fit, then on the VStack, dot on appear, perform load image. Then outside the body, we'll say func load image, image equals image example. First, notice how smoothly SwiftUI handles optional views. It just works. However, notice how I attach the on appear modifier to a VStack around the image because if the optional image is nil, then it won't trigger the onAppear function. Anyway, when that code runs, it should show the example image you added, neatly scaled to fit the screen. Now for the complex part. What actually is an image? As you know, image is a view in SwiftUI, which means it's something we can position and size inside a SwiftUI view hierarchy. It also handles loading images from our asset catalog and SF symbols, and it can load from a handful of other sources too. However, ultimately, it's something that gets displayed. We can't write its contents to disk or otherwise transform them beyond applying a few simple SwiftUI filters. If you want to use core image, SwiftUI's image view is a great endpoint, but it's not useful to use elsewhere. That is, if you want to create images dynamically, apply core filters, save them to the user's photo library, and so on, then SwiftUI's images aren't up to the job. Apple gives us three other image types to work with, and cunningly, we need to use all three if we want to work with core image. They might sound similar, but there is some subtle difference between them, and it's important you use them correctly if you want to get anything meaningful out of core image. Apart from SwiftUI's image view, the three other image types are UI image, which comes from UI kit. This is an extremely powerful image type that can work with a variety of different types, including bitmaps, like ping, vectors like SVG or PDF, and even sequences that form an animation. UI image is the standard image type for UIKit, and of the three, it's closest to SwiftUI's image type. The second is CG image, which comes from Core Graphics. This is a simpler image type, it's really just a two-dimensional array of pixels. And the third is CI image, which comes from Core Image. This stores all the information required to produce an image but doesn't actually turn that into pixels unless it's asked to. Apple calls CI image an image recipe rather than an actual image. There is some interoperability between the various image types. We can create a UI image from a CG image and create a CG image from a UI image. We can create a CI image from a UI image and from a CG image, and we can create a CG image from a CI image. We can create a Swift UI image from both a UI image and a CG image, and more. Now I know, I know, this is confusing, but hopefully once you see the code, you'll feel better. What matters is, these image types are pure data. We can't place them into a Swift UI view hierarchy, but we can manipulate them freely, then present the results in a Swift UI image. We're going to change load image, so it creates a UI image from our example data, then manipulate it using core image. More specifically, we'll start with two tasks. First, we need to load our example image into a UI image, which has an initializer called UI image named to load images from an asset catalog. It returns an optional UI image because you might have asked for an image that doesn't exist. Second, we'll convert that into a CI image, which is what core image wants to work with. So start by replacing your current load image implementation with this. 
guard let input image equals UI image named example else return. Let begin image equals CI image image input image. And then more code to come. The next step will be to create a core image context and a core image filter. Filters are the things that do the actual work of transforming image data somehow, such as blurring it, sharpening it, adjusting the colors, and so on. And context handle converting that process data into a CG image we can work with. Both of these types come from core image, so you'll have to add two imports to make them available to us. So please start by adding these near the top of contentview.swift. Import core image and import core image.ci filter built ins. Next, we'll create the context and filter. For this example, we're going to use a sepia tone filter, which applies a brown tone that makes a photo look like it was taken a long time ago. So, replace the more code to come comment with this let context equals ci context, let current filter equals ci filter dot sepia tone. We can now customize our filter to change the way it works. Sepia is a simple filter, so it only really has two interesting properties. Input image is the image we want to change, and intensity is how strongly the sepia effect should be applied, specified in the range 0, the original image, and 1, full sepia. So add these two lines of code below the previous two. Current filter dot input image equals begin image. Current filter dot intensity equals 1. None of this is terribly hard, but here's where that changes. We have to convert the output from our filter to a Swift UI image that we can display in our view. This is where we have to lean on all four image types at once, because the easiest thing to do is, first, read the output image from our filter, which will be a CI image. This might fail, so it returns an optional. Second, ask our context to create a CG image from that output image. This also might fail, so again it returns an optional. Third, convert that CG image into a UI image. And fourth, convert that UI image into a Swift UI image. Now you can go direct from a CG image to a Swift UI image, but it requires extra parameters and it just adds even more complexity. So here's the final code for load image. First, we'll get a CG image from our filter or exit if that fails. We'll say guard let output image equals current filter dot output image else return. Next, we'll attempt to get a CG image from our CI image. If let CG IMG equals context dot create CG image output image from output image dot extent. We'll then convert that to a UI image. Let UI image equals UI image CG image CG IMG. And finally convert that to be a Swift UI image. Image equals image UI image UI image. If you run the app again, you should see your example image now has a sepia tone applied, all thanks to the core image. Now you might well think that was a heck of a lot of work just to get a fairly simple result. But now you have all the basics of core image in place, it's relatively easy to switch to different filters. That being said, core image is a little bit, well, let's say creative. It was introduced way back in iOS 5, and by that point, Swift was already being developed inside Apple. But you really wouldn't know it. For the longest time, its API was the least Swifty thing you could imagine. And although Apple has slowly chipped away at its cruft, you'll still find some things that behave weirdly. To demonstrate this, we could replace our sepia tone with a pixelation filter like this. Let current filter equals CI filter dot pixelate. And then we'll say current filter dot scale equals 100. When that runs, you'll see our image looks pixelated. A scale of 100 should mean the pixels are 100 points across, but my image is so big the pixels are still relatively small. Now let's try a crystal effect like this. I'll change the current filter to be cifilter.crystallize. And I'll do radius equals 200. When that runs, we should see a neat crystal effect. But what actually happens is our code just crashes. Our code is valid Swift and valid core image code, but still doesn't work. What you're seeing here is a bug, and perhaps it's even fixed by the time you follow this video. It's caused by Apple not doing a particularly great job at patching over the weirdness of core image. And if we switch to the older API, it works great. Current filter dot set value begin image 
full key, KCI input image key. KCI input image key is a special constant that specifies the input image for a filter. And if you get into it a little, you'll see it's actually a string. Core image was, and still is behind the scenes, a completely stringly typed API. This becomes more apparent when you realize that only some of Apple's core image filters were spruced up with the new Swifty API. For example, if you want to apply a twirl distortion, you have to use the old API, which is quite painful. We create a CI filter instance using the exact name of a filter. We need to set its values by calling set value repeatedly each time using different keys. And because CI filter isn't a specific filter, Swift will allow us to send in values that aren't supported by the filter. For example, here's how we'd use a twirl distortion. Guard let current filter equals CI filter name CI twirl distortion else return. Current filter dot set value 2000 for key KCI input radius key. Current filter dot set value CI vector X input image dot size dot width divided by two, y, input image dot size dot height divided by two, for key, KCI input center key. By the way, CI vector is core images way of storing points and directions. If you run that code, you'll see the end result still looks great. And hopefully Apple will continue to clean up this API in the months and years ahead. Although the newer API is much nicer to work with, we'll mostly be using the older API in this project because it lets us work with any kind of filter.